coming up on BCN today. A snow squall hits southern Alberta, reducing visibility and bringing gusty winds, lightning, and even the possibility of thunderstorms. And the death toll from the Tennessee tornadoes now risen to over 25 and could still be climbing. Plus, the province announces it will be funding an extra 18 beds on the Blood Tribe safe withdrawal site. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello and thanks for joining us on this snowy Wednesday. Just when we thought we were in the clear for spring, Lethbridge awoke today to a snow squall alert. A fast moving cold front tracked across parts of central and southern Alberta this morning. Along the front, gusty winds and heavy flurries caused reduced vi visibility on the highways. There were also reports of lightning. Those heavy flurries should end late this morning and then a mix of sun and cloud with a 60% chance of more snow and even a risk of a thunderstorm into this afternoon. We'll have a full look at the weather later on in our show. Quite the morning though. Lethbridge police have charged a 29 year old man in connection with an incident where a security guard was assaulted by a client at the supervised consumption site. Yesterday, just after 6 a.m., the, se the security guard approached a man in the waiting area after he was seen injecting himself. Drug use is only permitted in the consumption area. And when the man was told to stop, he became agitated and shot the contents of the syringe, including blood and other fluids, into the security guard's face before being taken into custody. The security guard was treated at the hospital but will require ongoing treatment as a result of the exposure. 29-year-old Wade Allen Nicholas Crosschild faces numerous charges. The provincial government announced Tuesday that the safe withdrawal management site at the Blood Reserve will receive an extra $2.2 million in funding. The money will help create an extra 18 beds at the Bringing the Spirit Home site which will bring the total to 24 beds. The province also announced $13.6 million this year for the Blood Tribe Police to help combat drug crime on the reserve. Provincial funding this year will increase $480,000 so that five additional officers can be hired. The amount of ground that they have to cover here, uh, dealing with challenges in the communities, uh, I think that this will help us keep people boots on the ground so that they can provide this, the services required to keep people safe. We have to innovate. We cannot simply do things as we have in the past. It's not working. We have to change the dial and change the channel as to how we provide services. That includes how we police. It includes how we provide treatment as well. The Blood Tribe Police uh, has been under-resourced for many years, and that's no secret. The, as, a result of the, as a result, the men and women of the Blood Tribe Police Service have been doing more with less. And that's a t testament to their commitment to this community. This means that additional 3,755 spaces over the next three years will be created. It also connects clients to other services to help them continue on their path to treatment and recovery. The new funding for the Blood Tribe Police Service is part of a $1.4 million increase in the province's contribution to the First Nations policing program. Thirteen members of a Medicine Hat nonprofit group, which was being detained in Ethiopia, have received bail. Canadian Humanitarian said in a release Tuesday that bail has been posted for the organization's 10 Canadian volunteers, three Canadian staff, and two Ethiopian staff detained at an Ethiopian jail since February. The release says they are hoping the detainees will be released today. At that point, they will be free to move within the country, but it's uncertain when they will be allowed to fly back to Canada. Authorities have suggested the group may have to remain in Ethiopia until the investigation is completed. The group was originally charged with practicing medicine without permission and using expired medication. Canadian country music star Brett Kissel says a tornado narrowly missed his condo in Nashville early yesterday morning. He says much of the surrounding area in his neighborhood is in ruins. Kissel, who is from Flat Lake, Alberta, says the twister got so close to his building that cars in its parking lot had smashed windows. Meanwhile, rescuers searched through shattered Tennessee neighborhoods for bodies after tornadoes ripped across a 16 kilometer stretch in downtown Nashville and other parts of the state as families slept. 
At least 140 buildings were shredded, and authorities say at least 25 people were killed, some in their beds. It's like a, a freight train, whirlwind, explosive sound, and it was through fast. I mean, it seemed a long time, but after it went through, it, it went through pretty fast. Um, they're not really letting people in down there very much right now, so I'm just going to wait till tomorrow and then try to go volunteer tomorrow morning. Back home, there were some, some family friends that uh, they found them laying in the bed together with the house collapsed on top of them. Matt Collins, oh, his yeah, and then a guy that I went to church with growing up, um, his daughter passed, and I don't know how him and his wife are. I heard they were in the hospital in rough shape, but their little daughter passed. The Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society and the Wilderness uh, of Alberta Wilderness Association are angry the province plans to partly close 20 provincial parks and hand over 164 others to private managers. Premier Jason Kenney's government says the move will save $5 million. An online petition protesting the changes had more than 8,000 signatures by mid-afternoon yesterday. The Associate Superintendent of Business Affairs for the Lethbridge School Division says current government funding will not keep pace with the student growth in our city. Christine Lee says they will have around $3 million less in their budget than they did in the 2018-2019 school year. Lee says this year they received $110 million and next year just over $111 million. She says at the same time, they anticipate an extra 230 students in the 2021 school year. Why that is a concern to our district is that in the 2019-2020 school year, um, we received a $5 million uh, cut to our class size grant and then some tr transition funding, which left us with about a deficit of $3 million that we had to make up with one-time reserve funds. So when we move into this budget with an additional $300,000 in instruction, we have to account for that $3 million that we actually used in reserves. Um, compounded with, uh, we have about 230 extra students um, that are not funded under this uh, new funding framework. Lee says board members will meet soon to discuss how they can best absorb the year-over-year -year cuts from the province. After a warrant was issued for a man who never showed up for his manslaughter trial on Monday, Stanley Big Sorrell Horse turned himself into the Lethbridge Police Monday evening. On Tuesday, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter charges. The 38-year-old is accused of killing Rance Bearhat two years ago on the Blood Reserve. A Calgary judge has found a former university student not guilty of charges connected to a drug-fueled attack on a professor. Queen's Bench Justice Michelle Hollins determined that the man who had consumed magic mushrooms and alcohol was in a state of delirium and was not in control of his actions. Court heard that Matthew Brown was naked when he broke into the home of Janet Hamnett on, in the early morning of January 13, 2018 and hit her with a broom handle causing injuries to her arms and hand. The former captain of Mount Royal University's men's hockey team apologized for the attack during the trial. Hamnet's daughter says the verdict is disappointing. A new poll suggests 61% of Canadians surveyed weren't happy with the way Prime Minister Justin Trudeau handled rail and road blockades set up in solidarity with BC's Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. But the poll also shows there is solid support for Indigenous rights issues, with 57% believing Indigenous land claims are valid. The Liberal Party's overall polling numbers remain fairly stable, suggesting while people aren't happy with Trudeau's handling of the situation, the issue is only cementing the partisan lines that already exist. And Prime Minister Trudeau says he understands that his government has its work cut out when it comes to reconciliation. He says the key is to simply move forward. There have been uh, difficult times over the past few weeks, but Canadians have remained focused on moving forward. Uh, we know uh, that uh, centuries of uh, marginalization, of oppressive, broken gov government policies have created a situation that is untenable. That is why so many non-Indigenous Canadians uh, have been asking over these past years 
for us to do more on reconciliation, to do more to create real opportunities around language learning, around cultural, uh, cultural protections, uh, around uh, solving and resolving uh, the very many challenges in Indigenous communities from lands and title to uh, services that they need. Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland is going to chair a new cabinet committee Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is creating to deal with the novel coronavirus outbreak. It will complement the work being done by the government's incident response group. Canada now has 33 cases of the new coronavirus. There are reports the Italian government has ordered schools nationwide to close for the next two weeks to limit the spread of the coronavirus. As China's new infections drop, three countries are emerging as major trouble areas, South Korea, Italy and Iran. Iran reported 92 deaths among its 2,922 confirmed cases yesterday, the most of any country except China. Our foreign affairs expert Lisa Deftari says a vaccine may be coming sooner rather than later thanks to the efforts of scientists in a lab in Israel. Interestingly enough, there is a lab in Israel that has been studying this virus even before it became the pandemic that it is becoming and they said that they may, may have the first uh, look at uh, some sort of vaccine within weeks from now, but that vaccine will have to be tested and retested again. The full interview with Lisa Deftari is coming up later in our show. And here's an interesting twist on the coronavirus. 38% of American beer drinkers surveyed recently said they wouldn't buy Corona beer under any circumstances at the moment, suggesting that some people may be mistakenly linking the Corona brand with the coronavirus. Unbelievable. And south of the border, Joe Biden scored Super Tuesday victories from Texas to Massachusetts, a revitalizing a presidential bid that was teetering on the edge of disaster just days earlier. The Democratic nomination race now looks like a Biden-Sanders two-person battle, according to White House correspondent Zeke Miller with the Associated Press. <laughs> Well, this is certainly a big night for Joe Biden, uh, certainly given where his campaign was two weeks ago, where it was essentially left for dead by the political class and by many of the uh, of the Democratic electorate. Biden's ability to uh, demonstrate widespread support among the Democratic electorate uh, across the country uh, was a huge boost for his campaign. It was also a significant night for, for Bernie Sanders as well. But uh, it was it was expected to be a big night for Bernie Sanders. So in terms of expectations, certainly uh, this seems to be uh, this dominant storyline does seem to be Joe Biden. We can do extraordinary, extraordinary things. That's the real test for, for Joe Biden. He won tonight uh, without any uh, big investment on the ground, both in terms of staff, uh, in terms of television ads. That is indicative of a, of a bit of a consolidation within the Democratic field. Bernie Sanders, on the other hand, has a lot of grassroots support, a lot of money and a lot of field, uh, field staffers ready to deploy as this race continues. So this will, may end up being a battle between uh, Bernie Sanders' small but well-organized and well-funded support um, and, and Joe Biden's increasingly consolidated uh, backing among the Democratic uh, sort of establishment vote. A snow squall watch and blowing snow warning has been in effect for Lethbridge this morning. I will have full weather details coming up right after the break. Stay with us. And welcome back to our very snowy, blowy Wednesday. Uh, snow squall warning was in effect earlier today. We do actually have some risk of thunderstorms, snow thunderstorms later on today. Reduced visibility to five kilometers per hour. Um, four degrees is the high and into tomorrow we're going to see a high of 11 degrees with some sunshine. What can I say? It's southern Alberta. The weather is wonky here. And then Friday we could see it up into the teens as high as 14 degrees with overnight showers into Saturday morning, which could turn into flurries. Uh, and then only a high of minus eight on Saturday, minus three for Sunday, and then up to six degrees and on Monday and nine on, on Tuesday, rather. So um, we got a mix of sun and cloud too coming up on Monday and Tuesday as well. The almanac highs and lows this time of year. So four is the average high, minus eight the average low. We're definitely in that range. Uh, 17 degrees was the high temperature back on in uh, 1987. 
And on this day in 1962, it was a freezing minus 32 degrees. The sun rose this morning at 7.07 a.m. and it will set at 6.18 p.m. Nice to see those days getting longer. Now looking over to the west coast today, lots of sunshine in Victoria and Vancouver with highs of 9 and 10 degrees there. Uh, Edmonton's high 3 degrees with a chance of snow there. Sunny skies in Calgary today with a high of 4 degrees. And then over in Saskatchewan, they're going to be seeing snow there as well. Saskatoon's high 1 degrees. One, uh, 4 degrees is expected to be the high in Regina today with a mix of sun and cloud and a possibility of some flurries. Flurries also expected today in Winnipeg with a high of zero degrees. Now looking over to Toronto, they could see a chance of snow today with a high of five degrees. They're looking at a possibility of showers today in Ottawa with a mix of sun and cloud, a high of three degrees. Two degrees is the expected high today in Montreal. Also a chance of flurries there. Lots of showers happening today in Atlantic Canada. Fredericton high uh, four, uh, four degrees, seven high is the high in Halifax, and eight is expected to be the high over in Charlottetown with lots of rain. Rain also expected today in St. John's Newfoundland with a high of five degrees. What can I say? It's a rainy, snowy country today. There you go, that's your forecast. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. On Friday, March 6th, World Day of Prayer will be taking place at 2 p.m. at Southminster United Church and at 7 p.m. at the Coaldale Mennonite Church. All are welcome to attend. World Day of Prayer is an international interchurch event that will be celebrated in over 1,100 Canadian communities and in over 170 countries. The vision of this gathering is to restore hope to those who have been touched by injustice. So come join fellow believers in Christ as we lift up prayers of faith for our world. Come for a night of down-home fun to the Friends Winter Barn Dance on Saturday, March 7th, beginning at 7 p.m. at the Galt Museum and Archives. Proceeds will go towards educational programs at the Galt. Tickets are $30 for adults, $20 for youth ages 11 to 17, and children 10 and under are free. Purchase yours by visiting galtmuseum.com. Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered recovery program for any hurt, hang-up, and habit. This group meets Friday nights at Park Meadows Baptist Church. The evening begins at 7 p.m. with small group sessions at 8 p.m., followed by coffee and dessert at 9. For more information, visit CelebrateRecovery.ca. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. Today's daily life hack is dedicated to all those who work in retail or customer service. Here's a fun one. Place a mirror behind you at your workstation because customers will be nicer as no one wants to see themselves being a jerk. <laughs> there you go. That's your daily life hack. Probably some good advice. Not only do pets give you unconditional love, but they have been shown to be psychologically, emotionally, and physically beneficial to their companions. BCN stopped by the Lethbridge Animal Shelter and we fell in love with a seven month old puppy named Kona. She's ready for adoption and here she is with this week's BCN's pet feature. This pet feature is brought to you by Aqua Steam Services, carpet, upholstery, and tile care. Hi everyone, it's Officer Sherry with Lethbridge Animal Services. Today I am here with Kona. She is a seven month old shepherd cross that was surrendered to us a few months ago. Uh, she's finally available for adoption. She's been spayed, micro microchipped and vaccinated. Uh, to view Kona or other adoptable pets, make sure to check us out on Facebook at Lethbridge Animal Services or our Instagram at Lethbridge Animal Services. This pet feature has been brought to you by Aqua Steam Services, carpet, upholstery and tile care. Experience the clean difference. What a little cutie Kona was. Okay, here's one that makes me extremely nervous just thinking about it. Daredevil Nick Walenda is going to cross the Messiah Volcano in Nicaragua on a tightrope in a live two-hour TV special this evening. Walenda says he'll be contending with the wind, the heat, and heavy volcanic gases. The 41-year-old calls it a wire walker's worst nightmare. Yeah, a big part of my training, I will be practicing in a smoky room, but it's training, believe it or not, with my eyes closed. It's training with a gas mask on. It's training with goggles on. Uh, it's training with wind machines. It's kind of throwing every element that I'll be facing. Of course, we can't recreate the actual sulfuric gases that are in the air, but wearing the mask, which filters that out, is a great simulation of that.
No, so the cables can't go up early because that sulfuric gas is in the air will actually eat through the cable um, to the point where it will it will actually crumble. We've had pieces of cable there that I can grab and I've got video of it and they literally just fall apart in your hand. So we can't put it up in advance. It's got to be put up very short window prior to the actual walk. So my training now is done in Florida, which uh, Sarasota, Florida, which is where I'm based. I train in my backyard there. I've got a wire about 750 feet long where we simulate winds and we simulate, uh, I'll walk blindfolded. We simulate the tensions and everything that I'll be, I'll be feeling on the wire itself so that I'm prepared for all of that. Good luck, Nick. I don't think I'll be brave enough to be watching that one live. Well, if you're not familiar with escape rooms, they are attractions in which you have to solve mis mysteries to get out. They've been become a really popular, especially for companies that want to develop team building amongst employees. There are several escape rooms right here in Lethbridge, and we wanted to know just how safe these rooms really were. BCN's Loris Alexander went to the Great Escape to find out for us. Imagine you're about to enter this dimly lit room. Or you're locked in this room and there's some sort of emergency like a fire. There's no time to solve clues and you need to get out fast. That's why the owner here at The Great Escape says there's safety precautions in place. At The Great Escape, you have 45 minutes to navigate the Wild West room. Without our camera light, it's pretty dark and all you have is your brain. So the Wild West room, basically what you're trying to do is you are looking to steal Willie Jackson's gold. So you have 45 minutes to get in there, find the gold and get out of there before he returns. That's just one game. There is also the game plan and inheritance. The owner says they try to make the decor look realistic, but here's what's not so obvious. So there is cameras in all the rooms. Uh, we can see everything that's happening in the room at all times. And we kind of monitor the games to, to see where they're at, how they're doing, just make sure that nothing's going wrong for them. And we can always communicate with them through our hint button. We have a hint button inside the room. Anytime they need some help or have a question, they just press that button and it uh, lights up a little light here for us. And we, we go in there and we kind of help them out. Escape rooms are very popular. Yeah, so the While the riddles and clues are tough, the Great Escape says safety is easy. Like For Bridge City News, I'm Loris Alexander. What are some of the biggest challenges farmers in Southern Alberta face today? Soil conditions? Competition? How about the ban of Canadian canola to China? Ken Coles, the Executive Director of Farming Smarter, gives us his thoughts next. Uh, and that's coming up right after this short break, so stick around.